so with that, I guess I would just like to remind everybody is watching for updates on the project website and remain signed up for email updates. Um, and I guess at this point, I would like to open it up to any questions or comments for the project team. Um, once again, feel free to use the chat box or to, to unmute and talk. Um, and I would say, um, just keep in mind too, uh, that, you know, we have about 37 participants on, so, um, maybe keep comments and questions to, to a couple minute tops each and provide plenty of opportunity for anybody else to speak up. Actually, if I could just add a couple of things I, I, I meant to touch on, on kind of the what to expect during construction. Um, you know, there is gonna be a lot of activities in days, in, in, on certain days, uh, there could be several dozen, four dozen, five dozen people working on the project with various roles. Um, the, the city and county will have uh, staff on site um, so that um, they can assist the contractor interpreting the, the construction plans. Um, there are weekly construction meetings that staff attends and that's, that's where Ashley's uh, communication pieces will be generated from. Um, so if you're not receiving information on a weekly basis through email, uh, contact the project team so we can make sure that that, that info uh, it's out to you. Our first uh, question came from Trevor is what or could there be some signage on Diffley and Braddock in the first one to two weeks before June 1st to let road users know that Diffley will be totally shut down? Will we get some pre signage out there? Thank you. Yeah, you want to take that one? Sure. Typically, the county will put signage out one week ahead of starting construction. So if we're planning to start on June 1st, it would be one week prior. And it might be if that's Memorial Day, it could be the Friday before that, just to make sure people are being made aware of that closure. Okay. Thank you. A couple more questions came in. Does the plan include a walkway along the Daniel Drive driveway to Dakota Hills? If not, are plans to improve the woods pathway? Um, John, do you maybe wanna talk about um, the where we got with the sidewalks along Daniel and Braddock? Sure, Ashley, you know, um, there was some public communication regarding potential for uh, sidewalks along Braddock Trail, both Braddock, Braddock Trail and along Daniel Drive. Um, the the um, majority of the folks along those corridors were not in favor of, of installing a, a sidewalk on those, uh, on those locations. But I think the question, Ashley, is, is, is regarding the the trail within the, the school site itself, along the, the west side of, of Dakota Hills between Northview Park Road and um, Northview Park Elementary and Dakota Hills Middle School. So that dashed line, I believe, on the, on the screen, mm -hmm. that dashed trail. Yeah, I guess um, I mean, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, would, I would put that back, I guess, uh, a question to the school district, I guess, to see if there's any plans to improve that in any way. I know it doesn't meet uh, ADA standards, but um, maybe we should just go over what the current, the current status of those is. One, one, of them, one of those is paved and one is not, correct? Trevor, Holly? They're both, they're both paved going down the hill, one being longer and at a shallower grade. 
there is a section between that uh, equipment shack and uh, going south toward the power station that is currently unpaved, but the rest of it is asphalt. And then, thank you. The next, the next question is, what's the nature of the trail through the woods? I think the question is about the new trail potentially on the, yeah, where your, where your cursor is right now, Ashley or Chris. And that is a uh, proposed to be an eight, eight foot wide bituminous trail, asphalt trail. Yeah, Cody, do you want to kind of talk through? Yeah. What the condition is going to be? Yep. Yep. So that, that new trail there from Braddock Trail to the south lot, um, that will be, as John mentioned, an eight foot bituminous trail with uh, trail lighting. Um, it will be at uh, ADA accessible grades and turns. Um, and then that comes down the hill and exits there at the the new access road intersection with the uh, the south lot uh, where it is uh, signed as an all-way stop um, to really bring the, the visibility of the parking lot into full view for uh, cars coming in on that new access road coming down the hill um, having them stop take a look at their surroundings especially with the number of uh, bikes and pedestrians and school buses and other cars going through even through that that parking lot. Um, so the intent of that was was to get everybody to kind of slow down, stop and take take a second look at their surroundings before continuing on into the parking lot. And just to touch on the the other two existing trails on the west side of Dakota Hills. Uh, yes, the, the southern one does not meet uh, ADA slope grades, it's up to about 10%, um, but it is paved with lighting. The, the northern one is also paved and does have uh, less than 5% slopes. Um, and then as, as Trevor mentioned, there's a section there between the, the, um, the south trail and that where the north trail turns to the, to the east that is uh, currently unpaved. Um, and so just the last bit of that piece um, down by Northview Elementary School. It's a little hard to see in the, in the diagram here, but um, the crossing across Diffley on the west leg of Daniel, that path then goes uh, to the north, um, crossing that new T intersection on the north side of the roundabout. Um, where the east and west traffic has a stop um, and that that will be all newly paved up by the the substation for Dakota Electric um, as kind of the, the proposed path um, from students that are crossing at Daniel to get to the high school and middle school. So, so the, the direct answer is there are improvements for that movement across the parking lot entrance um, with a crosswalk, a stop condition for one direction of traffic, a designated trail through the loading docks area at Northview, um, and that it's the exist, what's existing there today will remain intact, that it was looked at a, a couple of times and between the two trails that are there today, um, it was determined that there, there is adequate trail facilities on the west side of uh, Dakota Hills Middle School. I'm just, gonna go, go ahead, Holly. I just, I'm sorry. I just, my question is for, related to that w new walkway because, from my perspective, if I'm an Egan High School student and I can't use my pointer here to show you what I'm looking at, but if I was an Egan High School student coming down Braddock, the chances I'm going to take this U turn and walk all the way around to get to my east entrance um, locker. I have to assume is pretty unlikely. So how are we making it safer to cross the entrance to the middle school, even for those kids, for those kids who opt out of the longer route down the path and, and whatnot? What, you know, that, that entrance is still gonna be crossed whether um, you want kids to or not, they're still gonna be going across it. Right, we wanted to provide a, another option 
where the kids weren't forced to cross that, that uh, self-access entrance off of Braddock. But don't um, you think that's the natural crossing point, especially if they're um, for trying to get to that east entrance of the high school? I mean, I know this is an option. Def definitely, definitely. Well, we, will, we do it still anticipate having um, high school students coming up to the, the east entrance to come along Braddock Trail. Um, but we're trying to limit the exposure of that so middle school kids have the option to come through the woods and into the parking lot with, with little interaction with uh, vehicular traffic. <clears throat> Again, it's about reducing uh, the exposure here. Um, at that south, at that entrance off Braddock Trail to the south parking lot, um, we do have, we are, we are putting a, a an island and a right turn in to separate some of the vehicle traffic out to, to provide a, a refuge area for pedestrians to not have to cross all four lanes at once. Um, so there are some, some enhancements that are being done to that uh, crossing itself um, that you're pointing to, Holly. And in addition to that, Chris, with the new access road, there should be a pretty large decrease in the amount of vehicles actually taking those that left turn into the south lot. Right. Yeah. Um, reducing the exposure, the, the vehicle to pedestrian exposure, uh, the best that we can. This is Erin Libri with Dakota County. I also just wanted to mention that. The school district is in the middle of their safe routes to school planning, which is looking at priority routes and safe routes for the students to walk and, and get to school. So as part of that study, those safe routes will be identified um, where the safest place is for the students to walk. And once those safest routes are um, solidified, there's a commitment by the school district to place crossing guards uh, on the west sides of the roundabouts. Well, that, that's all, that's great. And I, I mean, the more we can do, the better. I just, you know, I'm aware of the guidelines for safe routes to school saying where there are natural crossings and natural walkways, those are the areas we should be looking at. And if that Brad, Braddock, that crossing is gonna be the shortest crossing for people to go. And so that entranceway is a big concern. I, I, you know, kids, yep, we can say this is the safer road to go, but if it's as much longer as it looks like with this path, um, I just don't believe that's going to be as popular as just continuing down the sidewalk and uh, to the entrance. Yeah, Colin, I, um, in the safe routes to school planning, did you look at that, that connection? I know it's not highlighted on here, but were you anticipating us? Um, high school traffic to continue on along Braddock? That would be yeah, my guess that the kids, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, thanks, Holly, and thanks, Chris. Um, that's, that's an active conversation. We were just talking about that um, this week with, with Mary and the county and the district as well. Um, but what those options uh, you know, would be based on the existing school entry and exit points for the middle school and high school. So that's, that's yeah. part of the, the rationale for getting this trail through the woods, again, wasn't to eliminate all the, the um, it wasn't intended so that high school traffic that was coming up to the east and east entrance to the high school was going to kind of come around through campus. It was, can we pull students that are destined for the South High School and Dakota Hills Middle School off of the roadway uh, prior to getting up to this intersection. Because we looked at a variety of alternatives along both sides there and um, there were, a lot, were not a lot of good options that, to, to um, reduce the exposure on here. So we pulled the middle school trail back out and recognized that we still have a um, vehicle to vehicle to pedestrian exposure at that south lot, south lot entrance. If I'm understanding the new pedestrian trail correctly, it basically starts from the northwest corner of the Braddock-Diffley uh, intersection 
goes through the woods, goes around the perimeter um, of the bus lot, and then heads toward the south entrance of Dakota Hills and Egan High School. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, it walks down that sidewalk, that sidewalk that uh, goes north and south between the parking lot and the bus corral that already exists. So it takes them away from the buses and straight toward the building. Um, My question is, do you have any information as far as how long that walk is, starting from the northwest corner to the school door entrance? We could, we could calculate that. Um, Teresa, if I'm, if I'm reading between the lines here, that you're thinking that's still too long um, of a walk. The, uh, this is basically how we are able to fit the terrain uh, and still meet uh, ADA requirements to make it a, an accessible walkway. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I understand. I would just like the information. Um, yeah, Hopefully we, we, that can be posted on the Dakota County website. Yeah, we, we, could, we could compute that. Because again, the concern is having to take a longer out of the way route to get to school. And maybe remember about the temperature, whether it's, you know, 80 degrees out or 30 below zero. Understood. We'll, we'll get that information calculated. Thank um, you. I, I do want to address a couple other um, questions that were posted in the comments. There was, will the speed limits on Diffley be adjusted after the improvements are completed? Jenna, do you want to take that one? Speed limits or Aaron? I can take it. As part of our design, we're looking to, at a lower design speed. The speed limits are sent by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. The county board would typically request MnDOT do a speed study. The county board is committed to doing a speed study after the project's completed by reducing the lanes going from four lanes to two lanes, one lane in each direction, adding the roundabouts. We're anticipating the average vehicle speed to slow down so at, when MnDOT completes that speed study, we're hopeful for a lower speed limit, but it will be based on MnDOT speed study. And I have a question here that uh, I'll give to John Gorder. What time of day does the construction usually start and end? You know, that's typically dictated by a yeah, city. Our, our, our city code allows for construction uh, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday. That are our city code requirements. Um, given the short time frame of this of this construction, the the contractor may request that they work beyond those hours, uh, possibly Sundays. Maybe not beyond the 7 to 10 hours, but possibly on Sundays, in order to get this work done. So we're possibly going to get that request from a contractor. And I wanted to... Go ahead, John. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jenna. I just wanted to respond to a request in the chat box of can you share the road layout diagram again? And that is currently posted um, on the project website um, under the project information opportunity um, with um, the January 29th to February 15th dates. John, and just to add to what John said, um, you know, it's usually dictated by city ordinance when that what, what restricts the contractor. Um, I wouldn't anticipate 
six days a week, 15 hours a day for 12 weeks. Um, there, there may be certain days, uh, certain activities that the contractor will work longer hours. Paving days, uh, us in the business know that paving days are usually long days. Because once you start paving, you don't want to stop. Um, but I, I would expect there would be uh, some days that are longer than others. Uh, certainly rain days are shorter, shorter days and, and the ability to work weekends uh, to meet the, the time de deadlines that the contract will be under will be uh, under consideration. Um, another question here with the additional lights being added, uh, will the additional lights being added be dark sky compliant uh, and not overly bright? The new lights have Diffley pilot knob are overly bright and it seems we could be more efficient with our street lighting. Um, I'm not sure, Jenna, if you're able to answer that with the, with the typical uh, counter road lighting or roundabout lighting may be. I, I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to check with our, our lighting designer on what we're, what we're specking out on this. I would have to check specifically on Diffley Road. Cody may have some more information. I know the intent was not to make it seem for drivers that all of a sudden there was a bright lights and there was more to balance that for drivers. Cody, I'm not sure if you have anything additional to add to that. Yeah, I, I would just yeah add that that uh, the lighting at the the roundabouts as well as the Diffley Marketplace crossing will be bright enough to um, easily see uh, pedestrians and vehicles that are out on the roadway and on the pathways. Um, and so, in addition, we are uh, installing pedestrian scale lighting. Um, along the trail uh, through the school zone on Diffley Road as well. Um, so that should help with um, avoiding any um, intensely bright spots along the roadway, uh, but it'll be more of a, a gradual, gradually lit uh, section of road. Um, another question here from the chat. Seeing the large tip dump trucks coming from Diffley on Braddock for construction this summer made me wonder if the clearance would be for what the clearance would be for such vehicles or for school buses that may come with the trailer, especially for winter school activities when there is snow buildup. Uh, I guess there's probably a couple questions in there, um, and I'll pitch it over to John Gorder about um, the use of. Uh, North Northview Parkway and Braddock Trail for construction vehicles. Um, what, how that may or may not be regulated. Um, if that, if that's an allowable access route for them, other than the, the county road itself. Yeah, uh, Chris. Yeah, I think it it, it would be a, a an access route, but I, I would uh, I would look to our partners in the county to uh, try to, and, and you guys to try to encourage uh, uh, construction access, contractor access from Diffley Road mainly. Um, the Northview Park Road and Braddock Trail are, are built large enough to handle construction traffic, but um, it would be preferred that the majority of the construction traffic would come off both ends of, of Diffley Road on the, on the project site. So, so we'll try to guide your construction activity off of the county road, um, but, the, but we're not necessarily able to preclude them from using uh, Braddock Trail from the north. Right. Um, Next question here is I'm concerned about the safety of the location of the pedestrian crossing at of Diffley at Diffley Marketplace entrance. What is the reason for this crossing with the other adjacent crossings proposed? Is there any consideration for eliminating the westbound left turn lane into Diffley Marketplace to improve safety? 
Um, so I'll go from the bottom up here. Yes, there was uh, definitely some consideration. Uh, we looked at a number of alternatives, um, including eliminating that left turn, that westbound left turn in. Um, ultimately, we were balancing um, that commercial retail traffic uh, entering the site, entering and exiting the site with some of the uh, neighborhood concerns about that traffic being on, on Daniel Drive uh, with pedestrian safety at Diffley Marketplace. Um, the, the reason we, we chose to accommodate a crossing there um, uh, was because of the existing um, and perceived future or estimated future demand there. Uh, the existing demand uh, a lot had to do with uh, the ball fields that are there today and the retail, uh, the retail businesses on the south side, uh, large congregations of, of folks for soccer games or, or baseball games uh, on those facilities that uh, crossing at Lexington Avenue and crossing at Daniel uh, Drive um, wasn't going to be uh, a desired or likely location for people on either side of Diffley Marketplace, and they would end up crossing at the existing location uh, as they do, as we, uh, as many of us know, they do today uh, when those activities are occurring. So um, the decision was made to accommodate them uh, in the best manner fa uh, possible with the offset crosswalk and the rapid rectangular flashing beacon. Um, Mark Modal, you had asked a question about uh, what is the estimate of your traffic reduction on the middle school entry? Um, I, I have a presentation uh, from earlier meetings that I can share with you uh, on there on that. Um, I don't want to misquote the earlier work that we did, so I can I'll get that emailed to you. Um, is there a strategy or reason some of the crossing signs suggest adults cross and others suggest a family crossing? Um, I can answer that question. Um, the, uh, the crossing that shows a single person, um, like what we're proposing at the Diffley Marketplace place crossing is the standard uh, crosswalk sign uh, and is consistent with the Minnesota Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, the two-person signs or the, or the school signs, um, the five-sided um, signs are a designated uh, school crossing to indicate there's a, a student and adult uh, crossing at that location. That too is the uh, standard um, school crossing uh, sign in the Minnesota Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. So slightly different message, one indicating that there's a, that there should be school uh, activity present. Having lived, lived here 31 years, please know that we appreciate each and every facet of this much needed project living across the street from the middle school entrance. We've had our patients tested on more than a thousand occasions and having been out there in slightly less than a thousand occasions, I can only imagine um, with uh, the traffic backups that, that we, we witnessed and, and have evaluated uh, between Diffley Road and that south entrance. Um, I can assure you that uh, with the new access road uh, the queuing, uh, the, the queuing that you see trying to get in to the, the parking lot uh, essentially is removed uh, with these improvements. So a suggestion you could consider switching the paving paving material to concrete to reduce the lighting as concrete is much is more reflective, making the crossing areas safer also potentially reducing the amount of lights and therefore light pollution. In addition, concrete will 
reduce future road maintenance in the future. So we have a concrete fan, which I am also a concrete fan. Um, Jenna, do you want to address the, the pavement selection process the, the county goes through on something like this? Sure, Chris. We typically look at what we have along existing Diffley since this segment as you go west and east of Diffley is existing asphalt or bituminous, depending on the terminology you use. It's not likely we would switch to concrete for this segment because when you tend to switch from pavement types, asphalt to concrete, you get some, because of Minnesota winters, you get concrete heaving that would occur. So at the, we would not recommend, the county would not recommend switching to concrete pavement on this project. All right, once complete, would a school bus with trailer or a semi-type truck be able to maneuver through both roundabouts without difficulty, even the winter? Cody Christensen, I'll let you address that one. Uh, yes, we, we did look through the, the turning movements for both a, uh, a semi and a school bus uh, during the design of, of the roadway corridor. So um, yes, a, a school bus, uh, I don't know that we looked at a school bus with a trailer, but a school bus on its own can get through the roundabout without uh, crossing onto any of the, the truck aprons, um, either the truck apron on the inside of the roundabout or the ones that we have on the on the outside of the roundabout. Um, a, a semi trailer that would be traveling along this corridor uh, can also make it through uh, using some of those truck apron uh, pieces. Um, so yes, that, that was looked at and we made sure to accommodate those, um, especially the, the school bus not having to jump over any curbs. All right, and uh, Stacy, I see your note here directly to me. I'll, I'll uh, follow up with you um, here following the question and answer uh, on that about lighting. Um, next one here is eastbound Diffley loses the left turn lane into Northview. So all buses will now need to navigate the roundabout together with uh, an abundance of other vehicles in the exact corridor that it, that is a natural crossing location for pedestrians. I realize nothing will change at this, but the additional traffic to the corridor remains a concern, especially considering the lead time a larger vehicle needs to stop at roundabout crosswalk and then start moving again. Um, certainly it was a, a, a consideration as we looked at the access conditions and how much traffic was gonna be in that manual drive roundabout um, and the exposure uh, that pedestrians will have there. Um, again, the, the, the findings and what, what, what I particularly am a favor of roundabouts on is that um, single lane roundabouts is you just need the one car uh, to stop. Um, and, and even without the rapid rectangular flashing beacons, um, we see a, a yield rate uh, of greater than 80%. So eight out of 10 cars are stopping, um, including, including the school buses themselves. Um, you know, as these improvements move forward, um, I think the hope is by, by many of us that um, the, the walking and biking conditions are improved such that uh, fewer people are gonna be getting in their cars or getting on the bus to get to and from school um, and, and thereby reducing overall demand. Um, but uh, we can uh, we can do only so much to uh, to encourage that behavior, and, and we, will, we will certainly do what we can. I'm not going to keep up with these messages. I, every time I look, there's like four more than um, than what was there. Um, approximately, where is the speed limit effective? Is the interval between the first sign and the uh, mall crossing sufficient to ticket a person who runs that crossing at a higher speed. Uh, eastbound vehicle approaching the, the mall crossing from the west. <coughs> um, 
not ex exactly sure if I uh, understand the question, if it's, if it's in response to the, uh, the school safety zone or the school speed zone, um, that sign is currently located, located near the, the Cub Foods entrance here. So that crossing, um, so that reduced speed during school timeframes would be in effect at that marketplace crossing. <clears throat> who will be responsible for snow removal for between the lane parts of the crosswalk, city, county, school district? It's a good question that I'm not gonna answer. Um, <clears throat> Jenna, Jenna and John, do you wanna talk about the uh, snow plowing responsibilities for both the, the roadway, uh, the trail, and then the crossing through the median, I think is what the question is directly at, directed at. Sure, John, would you like me to go first? Yeah, and we have, we have Tim Plath on the line too to possibly answer a maintenance, such a maintenance question, so go ahead. The county would be responsible for plowing the roadway itself along Diffley Road as you go through the roundabouts as well. The city would be, and the, the city would be responsible for their roads and the school district would be responsible for the new access road. As Part of our agreement between the city and the county, the city does snow plowing of the trails along county roads. So I'll defer to Tim at this point if he wants to go into more detail. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. I think the question was also wondering um, possibly about the crossing in the median areas. Um, that would be part of the city's responsibility as well. And Tim, Tim, do you want to elaborate a little bit on, on how the city takes care of that timing and equipment and that kind of thing? Sure. Um, our, our policy right now treats our, excuse me, our school walking routes as our first priority, our highest priority after we are done plowing our roadways. Typically, that means um, early afternoon, um, we are on our school walking routes and our policy, if, um, if the snow event is, is wrapped up from a roadway plowing standpoint, um, then we get onto our trails and by the end of the first day, we're typically um, completed with our school walking routes. So this area is definitely um, a school walking route area. So after we're done with our roadway plowing, then we would um, move over into um, trail plowing and this area is one of the first areas that we hit uh, when we do that. Thank you. <clears throat> um, question here, it may be law, but, what will, but how will you guarantee drivers stop for a flashing yellow light? Will there be additional warning signs to stop when the lights are flashing? Uh, well, I, can, I can't guarantee that every driver is going to stop. Um, we, we can only put infrastructure in place that, that guides the users to make the right decisions uh, um, about yielding and, and following the, the law. That's, that's the, the role that we play. Um, the city police department I know is um, uh, going to be continue to watch this area uh, closely and uh, they have a little more um, authority to guarantee people to stop um, up to the point that they can, they can ticket um, and fine for, for lack of compliance. Um, while we can't guarantee every driver stops, um, we know that the conditions that we're uh, designing for here in other locations across the state and across the country do yield very high yield rates, uh, sometimes uh, seven to eight times as effective as, uh, as just a traditional uh, at grade crosswalk at, a, at an intersection. So uh, there are some vast improvements here being made for uh, pedestrian crossing uh, of Diffley Road as well as, as Braddock Trail. And then the last question I have here is will the asphalt and, and other materials being removed be properly recycled by companies doing their work? And I know Cody Christensen has an answer for this as we talked about this as we were putting together together the construction plans 
uh, for that material. So yes, the contractors are responsible for properly disposing of all those materials that are, are taken off site. Um, they will they will typically take the the concrete and and the asphalt or, or bituminous uh, to uh, offsite locations to usually grind it up and and reuse that on other sites. Um, they also have the ability to recycle the material on the project site if they are able to do so. Um, the material is of good enough quality and there is enough of it um, that if the contractor chooses to do so. Um, they can grind up the asphalt along with a little bit of the gravel that's beneath it um, and use that as the new base in the roadway. Um, so there are opportunities for them to recycle it on play, in place on the site, um, but yes, they are also responsible for taking it to a properly disposable site when they are done. I believe I'm at the end of the chat questions. I do have a question. Um, yes. I, it was in the chat, um, just asking about the presentation materials from tonight. Are they going to be posted on Dakota County's website soon? Yeah, Ashley, do you want to cover that? We will get a PDF version of the presentation that you viewed tonight on the website, as well as um, we will be uploading each recording of each um, virtual opportunity on the website as well. Okay, thank you. And then a question about the RRFBs. So I'm seeing that at each roundabout, there's only one set of RRFBs on one leg of a roundabout. I'm concerned that this gives drivers the impression on the other three legs that they'll see on the RRFB crosswalk that it flashes. So their attention won't be brought to mind when pedestrians are in those other non RRFB crosswalks. And I'm also on that note, very concerned about people in along this area, whether north or south of Diffley, that have disabilities or who are maybe older or just don't walk as fast as some people. And so without an RRFB, I don't know how attention can be brought to them even more. So the, the RRFBs were, were placed on the west leg of, of Daniel Drive and, and Braddock Trail, uh, primarily as an enhancement for the safe routes to school. Um, we anticipate, anticipate and we know from, uh, from current pedestrian crossing behavior uh, that those would be the, the most used crossings, particularly Diffley, and it's an added enhancement. It's not meant to to take away from the effectiveness or won't take away from the effectiveness of the other crossing locations. Uh, it's still gonna be very obvious to drivers approaching the roundabout, there'll be a signed crosswalk there. Um, and we know that uh, through, through studies of hundreds of other roundabouts that drivers are yielding at um, those crosswalks uh, prior to entry and upon exiting the roundabouts at rates uh, in excess of, of 80%. So we don't anticipate um, reduced effectiveness at the other crossings. We do still anticipate uh, a high yield rate. Um, we would be more concerned, and, and I think there's um, some concern just about how many flashing uh, devices we have in this corridor or will have in this corridor already uh, between the, the speed limit, school speed limit sign, and then really three uh, RRFBs in each direction. Um, it's going to be a lot already for the driver to uh, to comprehend and, and adding more flashing lights um, could start uh, reducing the effectiveness of the RRFBs where, where we quite frankly um, need them the most. Uh, that being at, at 
Diffley marketplace where we need those RFBs to uh, increase the, the yield rate at a, in a higher speed environment. Well, as an eyewitness to the current school zone speeds, when those lights are flashing and they're very intermittent, they continue to be ignored, I would say by 75% of the drivers. And we are not seeing enforcement like we should. So our concerns still remain very high regarding pedestrians crossing Diffley Road in uncontrolled locations. I think that, Teresa, I think that's understood um, that uh, the, there is a limit to what we can do out here to further improve uh, the uh, pedestrian environment. Um, with the improvements that we're looking at here uh, that will be constructed in, in just seven short months um, when we'll be able to, uh, to use this uh, this new facility. Uh, it is a, a dramatic improvement uh, to the four lane roadway that's out there today. Um, and I don't think that uh, there, there's much more we can do in a feasible manner to, to provide uh, a roadway environment, uh, safe routes to school environment um, that sets the users up to, to be as safe as possible. Are you still anticipating that there quite likely will be one to two minute delay, um, especially during morning school rush hours, that there'll be a delay in getting through the roundabout at both locations? I don't think that we were ever expecting a one to two minute delay um, at the roundabouts. I think there uh, has, has the potential uh, for some queuing eastbound at the, the Daniel Drive entrance. Um, and if I remember right, it was in the seven, seven to eight car range. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't measured in minutes um, for delay. Um, we wouldn't consider that to be a, a, a successful intersection traffic control if, if our average delays were, were one to two minutes. I'll have to look back on previous materials then. Um, I'm also wondering, um, right now we have the ability for emergency vehicles to use Opticom in order to stop traffic and hopefully traffic pulls over and they can um, get to where they need to go on Diffley Road. Um, how is that going to work with this new plan? So the uh, emergency vehicles will approach the roundabout intersection like any other intersection. Uh, drivers are aware not to stop uh, within the roundabout, not to block the roundabout traffic. And we have uh, shoulder areas or passing areas immediately outside of the roundabout so that drivers can pull over. Uh, the value of the roundabouts with emergency services, we don't need uh, the emergency vehicle preemption to clear out queues because we have a lot less uh, queuing that occurs. Uh, so an emergency vehicle uh, won't regularly encounter a queue or a red light uh, in which they need to override uh, in order to, to clear the, the intersection. Uh, the intersection will flow more naturally and more consistently uh, with the roundabout. Um, and thinking back on my previous question, um, I'm not sure that you provided an answer as far as disabled individuals or people that are slower walkers. So uh, a couple of questions in there. Um, the, the roundabout intersections that we uh, are proposing are all fully uh, ADA compliant. Um, 
the pedestrian activated uh, rapid reflect rapid flashing beacon um, also provides an enhancement for uh, blind pedestrians um, by by finding the the push button and they can hear the the vehicles come come to a stop at the crosswalk. Um, so they they do accommodate uh, handicap um, consistent with the, the, the federal guidance on ADA accessibility. Um, as far as slower or, or older walkers, um, the crossing paths are considerably shorter than what are out there today. Um, and so you're not exposed even at a slower rate of walking, you're not exposed to vehicle traffic once the once the vehicle yields or the motorist yields that lane is blocked and stopped. And by state law that motorist cannot proceed until you have cleared the lane, regardless if you're walking at uh, four feet, four feet per second or two feet per second. So it does accommodate slower walkers as well. Thank you for your answers. Yep. There's a, a one additional question that was added here. If you say 80% yield, that means 20% do not yield. Uh, wouldn't stop lights yield approaching approaching 100% compliance? Uh, yes, you would typically get better compliance at a stoplight. Um, as we see at the Braddock Trail stoplight, we do still have some conflict with turning vehicles. Uh, during that walk um, indication across uh, Braddock Trail. And unfortunately, um, as we look at crash st statistics, uh, there's still a, uh, a rather alarming um, percentage of pedestrian fatalities that are occurring at signalized crosswalks. Um, the signal can, can provide a false sense of security for pedestrians. Um, and, and, and still be exposed to high speed vehicles. Um, so while the yield rate may be um, only eight out of, t eight out of 10, uh, the lower speeds that provide, uh, that are uh, forced upon motorists uh, provides a, a safer location or safer condition for, for pedestrians to get across the road. Any other questions at this time? I really appreciate the questions. I think um, some really good things have been asked and what could be answered was, but we also know there's a few things here that, that uh, the team is going to continue to work on. So thank you to those who are trying to respond and thank you to those who are asking the questions. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and Ashley and Cody, I do have, um, just to make sure that we follow up on uh, the question about the, the redistribution of traffic and how much of the existing traffic is gonna be on the new access road. Um, I wanna have a follow-up conversation uh, and get back to Stacy directly about the um, dark skies, uh, the lighting units that we're, we're proposing here uh, to address those concerns. And then John, John Lee, I'll provide you my contact info um, at the email address that you left for me here. I'd like to remind everybody that um, if you think of any other questions or comments, there's opportunity to provide that on the website um, with the comment card or uh, project contact information. If I could just quick comment to the people that are um, with the SRTS committee. Um, I noticed that the where people are supposed to leave comments on an interactive map, it shows the old, well, basically the current version of Diffley Road. And I would hope it would be more productive to show the new plan so that people can get a better idea of 
where they would cross to get to school. Because when I looked at that, people are still commenting about the current issues. And if that has already been addressed by this design, then I, I highly encourage you to put the current plan being used as an interactive map on that safe routes to school for comments. Thank you, Teresa. We'll work on getting that updated. Um, this is kind of still fresh, so we're still getting it integrated, but we do have some language on the site to talk about that, um, but that's a really good suggestion. Thank you. Okay, thank you for hearing me out. And, and Tom, if you need anything, Ashley can certainly get you uh, access to any of the, the drawings or illustrations that we have. Well, we're approaching 6.30 uh, to the 6.30 end time for the, the meeting. Anybody have any, any closing comments? Jenna? Thank you for everyone who attended tonight. And I, I see we have a, a couple of you will be back um, for our next meeting, I think is a uh, Say the same meeting scheduled for tomorrow, and then we also have the same meeting again on Thursday. So uh, thank you all for attending and your attention to the, to the details here of the project. And uh, from, for my part, we're, we're in the home stretch. I know a lot of the pain of the construction is coming. Uh, we want to make sure everybody is uh, as ready as they can be for it. And, you got specific things um, on how, how are you gonna access this? My property's over here. I got this event during certain days. We wanna hear that. Uh, best to contact us directly and we can help guide, um, guide decisions on the contractor so that we can uh, provide the, act, the best access we can uh, given the situation of having the road uh, ripped apart. So thank you again, everybody. and. Uh, um, thanks for, for sticking with us here, and, and we're going to get this thing done here in a matter of months. So thanks.